What's up you guys? I'm Tyler and I'm here to show you today our new brand new dude perfect headquarters before I do that, I want to take a step back and I'm going to walk you through the journey of how we got here today. This is a story you're not going to want to miss out on, so stick around. All right, all jokes and trick shots aside, today I want to talk to you guys about Dude Perfect and the amazing story that they have. They are an incredible company. And yes, Tyler may or may not be my favorite. Dude Perfect started a long time ago, back when these group of guys were at Texas A&M, I believe 2009. In 2009, living together, doing these trick shots, going to college, and one day they decided to upload a video to YouTube, the infamous Dude Perfect trick shot video that just exploded on the internet. It took them mega viral, and the discussion between the guys that they've said is that they wish that they could find a way to do that again. They wish that that same fun that they had together was something that they could do forever uh, and so they decided to keep trying they decided to upload more videos and believe it or not you know it worked super super well let me know down in the comments what your favorite thing about the dude perfect guys are i'd love to hear it i think that there are so many different types and styles of content that they do i'd love to know what your favorite one is whether you're a fan of dude perfect someone who wants to become a creator just like them or whether you just are interested in the business of creators you are in the right spot uh, this is everything that we talk about on this channel so give us a subscribe and like i said this is something that they wanted to keep doing so they kept doing trick shots and they had to get crazier and crazier and they finally felt like they cracked youtube but it came to a point where they had to make a decision. The guys in a podcast interview explained that many of them had regular day jobs. Me, Cody, and Ty graduated college very much with clear intentions to go out into the real world and and pursue the yeah, real you know jobs. the degrees that we got. I'm still like, man, tomorrow I'm probably gonna have to go really? work somewhere. You know, I'm always the pessimist in the group. You know, it's just like. When's this gonna end? This is too good to be true, so. And so they were shooting, they were even having to drive long distance to come and shoot uh, after work and things like that. And that it was just getting away, it was getting to a point where it wasn't sustainable. Uh, many of you who know anything about YouTube know that you can make money on YouTube, but it's not always easy. And for a number of like five people to be able to make a full-time income on YouTube, it's not something that's just going to happen very easily. And so it had to get to the point where they were going to go all in or they were gonna back off. And they actually nearly stopped dude perfect at that point because it was just so hard luckily they decided to push through and keep it going and over the years the trick shots and the videos became more and more popular even to the point where big media was interested in them and over the next few years they worked and worked and worked to build their audience and gained more and more success but around the 2015 2016 timeline they realized that they needed to diversify this was something that just the money YouTube was paying wasn't enough and they realized that if they truly wanted to continue doing this for a long time that they needed to have a better monetization plan and so they started looking for other opportunities now at this point they were making money on YouTube they had done some sponsorship deals with some amazing companies that you guys I'm sure have seen the videos of which by the way they talk about only doing deals with companies that they actually believe in and that they always held true to their values I think that's an amazing point to make here that these people rely on their faith and their family and that they hold their values and morals dear I think that's one of the things that make dude perfect who they are and in 2016 to expand even further they got a Nickelodeon show where they were able to take their stunts and their trick shots and perform them on TV, expanding their reach even farther than before. They developed merch, which apparently was selling like crazy. That did super, super well. And they even signed some incredibly large sponsorship deals with companies like Nike and Nerf. I know that they've been a longtime partner of Nerf. Now this was all part of their multi-platform expansion, but they were also expanding out the different types of content that was on their channel. Again, this is something that's really important for creators who are on the platform for a long time. It's easy to get wrapped up and to have stale content to do the same thing over and over again, and then just become irrelevant. But that's something that the Dude Perfect guys did amazing at. Rather than becoming irrelevant, they always tried out new types of content. Things like Overtime, having the variety of that show made such a big difference. And then other series like Bucket List. Again, these are other things that made it so that they were able to stand the test of time which is a key thing for a creator business not just the diversifying of the platforms the diversifying of the monetization but also the diversification of the content is so so important and again they did that in just the best way possible and as they grew and grew and grew something they were able to also expand into was live tours visiting cities all over the united states to go see fans do trick shots have a great time with stadiums full of people who were there to support them i think this made a really big difference for their fans and built a ton of brand loyalty over the years another investment that they made that really diversified their business was into the frisco pandas a major league pickleball team valued at around five million dollars and this took them from the world of content creation 
transition to the world of sports business. This also really legitimized their business and took them to a whole nother world of opportunity. One of their coolest projects that I've heard about for quite a while, but just hasn't happened yet, but I really think it will, is their $100 million Dude Perfect theme park. A place where fans and anybody in the United States could go to the Dallas area and do the things that they do. Do the trick shots, participate in competitions, and be like the Dude Perfect guys. I think that this is a really cool opportunity, and of course not everyone will be able to participate, but just think about not only watching the content, but then also being able to participate participate in the content. I think that that's a really cool thing. They're also working on building their new $3 million headquarters right outside of Dallas. And I think, again, this is showing the growth and the expansion that they're having. It's funny because I was actually just in Dallas a couple months ago and got to see a couple of the Dude Perfect guys, as you can see here. Uh, and they were just so nice, so friendly, and it was really cool to hang around them for a bit. Now, of course, they've done the multi-platform diversification. They're on YouTube. They have videos posted on all other platforms. TikTok is another big one. Like I said, they branched out in their different types and styles of content and I really think that this is what has held them over. Of course they are a media business at the foundation and so creating all these different types of content that it can appeal to lots of different kinds of people and grow their audience base over time that has kept them standing the test of time. This strategy has really helped them build a loyal far-reaching audience over time. I think it's really cool that over the years even though it started as trick shots and just being the cool guys who do cool things with sports they've actually really dove into getting to know them on an individual level, their personalities, the behind the scenes content, all of these things, again, leading to some amazing success. I will say one thing that really stands out to me about the Dude Perfect guys is their focus on faith and family. Uh, now, of course, this may not be for everybody, but I do think that a lot of people who watch Dude Perfect watch them because they know it's a good thing for their family to watch. Uh, they know that the guys can be reliable and trusted to have good, safe family fun. And I think that that really shows through in their content, even though they're not necessarily overly preachy or doing anything like that. I think that they just have good, strong values. And I think that really stands out. That's just something that I really appreciate about them. The Dude Perfect guys are a great example to me of the perfect way to run a media company. Now, of course, their growth hasn't come without strains or bumps or bruises along the way, especially with the type of content that they're producing. But I just have to say that they make it look good. Um, they, it, it's, but I just have to say it feels so good. It looks really good and you can tell that they're just good people. And when I find creators to look up to, when I see how people are running their businesses and I want to look up to those types of people and business owners, these are the type of people that I think have done a great job. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you're a Dude Perfect fan, maybe you guys can be a fan of us too. We'll see you guys.